social media is ablaze with calls for lynching metaphorically of course of the chief justice of india for him uttering the words will you marry the girl and that is another great example of what i see happening across the courts in this country and of course across you know the the social media across this country where complete idiots who have no understanding of the law or the harsh realities the practical harsh realities of the indian justice system will go on and bark their faces off i know very very harsh words but bear with me as i explain to you why the chief justice of india did not make a heartless patriarchy fueled remark when he said will you marry the girl of course none of the people who have talked about how bad it is for a judge to say this have actually read either the order of the slp which of course there was just a few lines i'm sure uh, because i have not read it either but what is relevant which i have read on the basis of which i am making these assertions in full disclosure of course i have not read the entire thing i am not well equipped with the entire case yet being a criminal defense counsel from time to time and understanding how these things play out a reading of the bombay high court judgment did shed a lot of light on the situation and why the honorable chief justice of india might have might have said what he did say so we have to give the chief justice of india as well the benefit of the doubt and we have to consider the fact that maybe just maybe the chief justice of this country is not a you know patriarchal demon of of some sort the bombay high court order which reflects the the at least in in part the reason for this came uh, for the reason for this case coming into existence so the prosecutrix version is that about 5 6 7 years ago in about 2014 or 15 when she was in ninth class the accused person came and forced himself upon her and then the act kept continuing and then when the girl and her mother wanted to go and file a complaint about this the boy's mother stepped in and said i will uh you know i will get you married to my son and on the basis of that the girl did not file her complaint and after that the boy's mother and the boy refused to get married to the girl because of which the girl then went ahead and filed her complaint now of course i agree with the fact that a uh, an offense such as rape we have to understand the magnitude we have to understand that it is one of the gravest offenses in the you know in in society and of course the fact that it is not just a it is not just a an offense but it is also used as a tool to perpetrate physical violence i understand all of that however the harsh reality of this country is that the allegation of rape is also used by a of course uh angry lovers but more importantly and and in this context lovers who want to get married to the boy who does not want to get married to you know the 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 complainant <sighs> perhaps you know after having made promises of getting married or without getting uh, without ever making promises of getting married even in this situation the girl goes and tells the police that when she was in 9th class assuming she was perhaps about 15 years of age in the year 2014 2015 that's the way they've written it 2014/2015 the man forced himself upon her the sessions court granted anticipatory bail to the applicant accused person on the basis of the fact that there was substantial delay in her reporting the crime and the fact that if something might have happened it happened consensually i see nothing wrong with that argument the fact that you the the social media the high court as well 
impose POXO Act, which is cleverly used by the, in all probability, lawyer of the girl. And again, I cannot cast any aspersions, but I do speak from experience when I say that I see ever so often a complainant girl who wants to have revenge for whatever reason, be it a spurned lover or a business dispute gone wrong, POXO Act is regularly being used across the country to falsely implicate men because everyone understands that the moment there is an allegation of POXO, you cannot get bail. It is very, very difficult for you to get bail. Uh, it is far easier for you if you have proof, if you have evidences, if there is delay, for you to get bail in a rape case as well. However, POXO is something that is a big no-no. And because of that, there is a huge propensity by a lot of women who are perhaps 19 or 20 or 21 years of age to go to the police station, especially when they are from a lower economic strata of society where they have not really taken care of their education. They don't have any, uh, you know, any, any education proofs. They don't have anything else. So for them, it is very, very easy to hurl this allegation because of which the accused person is immediately arrested. And of course, after a couple of weeks or months or years, there is going to be the bone, bone ossification test. There is going to be other records. There is going to be investigation by the police. And so many times what happens is it is found out by the police that at the time of the girl leveling her allegations that this was recently committed upon me, the girl turns out to be a major and not a minor at the date of the filing of the complaint. In this situation as well, the girl allegedly claims herself to be below 18 years of age in 2019 when she files this complaint against the boy and claims that back in 2014, he raped her and then kept committing rape upon her. What is interesting here is the High Court observes that there was a settlement agreement entered into between the boy and the girl in which stated that the you know the, there is a compromise between the parties now the sessions court i believe took a took you know took that compromise to be in favor of the boy the high court as is always the case with compromise deeds in rape matters the high court took the compromise deed to be adverse to the boy, saying that you executed a signed agreement between yourself and the girl and the mother of the girl and your mother, which com which shows the kind of influence you have over the girl and her mother, because of which we should definitely not grant you bail. And the High Court went ahead and cancelled the bail or, you know, better, better said, set aside the bail granted to the the anticipatory bail granted to the to the applicant i have reached a little out of the the boundaries of my guesswork in favor of the boy and i do that because i have personally dealt with several cases because of which i would like to err on the side of caution and tilt towards the innocence of the accused person in a situation like this, all things considered, rather than his guilt, especially at this stage where I have seen no talk of any FSL being conducted. I have seen no discussion about the age of the girl being properly determined. In such a situation, I don't believe the POXO Act is anyways applicable. But I would request you, the viewer, to absolve me of my sin of overreaching my guesswork in favor of the accused person no matter which side you you of the of the spectrum you belong to if you're a men's rights activist you will hail me and you will say that this is a good thing if you are a if you're a feminist or you believe in the cause of of women uh you know you will you will call me a monster because you you're you're telling me that there, that i have far reached ahead with a lot of guesswork however Coming back to the point of what the Chief Justice of India said, the harsh reality of this country is that if a girl goes and files a complaint that this man promised to marry me and then he did not. And of course, you know, on the promise of marriage, he had sexual intercourse with me and then he did not. The Indian Penal Code says that any consent obtained under fraud or coercion is no consent at all. And therefore, if the consent was obtained on the false promise of marriage, the man says, I will marry you. It is okay. We can therefore have sex. It's not a big deal. Uh, we are about to be married and going to live as husband and wife anyways. 
the girl agrees to it it is definitely a case of rape there is definitely no consent however the difficulty is of course the supreme court has also several high courts have also in numerous judgments talked about the fact that this is a harsh reality that lovers who have an intention but then who have later a falling out or the boy feels that this is not something that i want to do the girl does go ahead and file a false complaint of her being raped on the false pretext of marriage and this i believe is a similar situation as well because this is also reflected from the orders of the bombay high court this is also reflected from the mood of the court and so i ask myself and i ask you the viewer who goes up in flames thinking about how dare the chief justice of this country ask a man will you marry your victim and thereby absolve him of his sins when the girl herself says that i want to get married to this man and he is not ready to marry me and then she goes ahead and files this complaint would you rather that the man go to jail for 7 years because the girl said that he raped her instead of there being ample proof or would you rather that the court try to in its wisdom come to an amicable situation where a girl who is not able to get married to the man that she wishes to get married to the court can facilitate perhaps i i being a man tend to tend to not really favorably look into look at the idea of a man being favorably pushed you know by by a little bit of a nudge by the court into marrying somebody but that's a different story altogether the question here is the way social media and news reports have been portraying this incident is a very very different scenario th than from what actually happened what actually happened in this situation was that the girl herself wants to marry the boy the boy concedes that he did consider marrying her at least they say that you know he did want to marry her but then she refused therefore he married somebody else and then even the fact that on social media everyone is portraying the situation to be such that will you marry her and the court gave him anticipatory bail for 4 weeks they don't talk about the fact that after the 4 weeks the man has to submit himself to custody and then he will apply for regular bail and he will suffer the consequences of the long trial of having to spend lakhs of rupees on lawyers and then ever never ever recovering from the situation anyways because he is after all a government servant who will now definitely be suspended and up after a separate inquiry his job will also be terminated having said that could we rule out the possibility of there being a false implication of the man just because he is a government servant i don't know because something very very recently happened which is very very similar to this situation and the situation that i faced was that a client came to me you know his relatives came to me where he had sexual intercourse with someone that he worked with and then after that the woman filed a rape case against him i don't know whether this was forced sexual intercourse or whether this was uh this was consensual and there therefore later the girl turned around and said this i do have some you know evidence with me because the court file the because the 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 charge sheet is with me in which there is there is certain discrepancy without a doubt there are several contradictions in the statements of the girl in what the fir says in what is recorded by the police under her state uh, you know for her statement under section 161 of the criminal procedure code and also what was recorded by the magistrate in her statement under section 164 of the criminal procedure code several inconsistencies in the statements a delay of about 9 months in going to the police and filing her complaint the fact that a week prior to the girl filing her complaint the man himself filed a complaint of extortion by the girl in the same police station saying that this woman keeps telling me that you give me this x amount of money if you don't i will file a false rape case against you there is an agreement executed between the two parties which the sessions court also takes an adverse view of and says that you had such control over your employee because of which you 
were able to get her to sign a document which shows your control, your influence, your power over the victim. Now, I don't know how to put it across without offending the several people who I am sure will find offense in whatever I just said. First of all, pardon me and my loose tongue for whatever I blurt out. Harsh reality of life is if there is sexual intercourse and the woman feels jilted, she feels that she got used, that is the that is the term, used by the man, she will go ahead and file her complaint. I personally feel that the offense of rape for which a man will go to jail for seven years should not be taken to be so lightly because I do stand by the definition of rape where consent is important. But after consent and after the fact of the sexual intercourse, if the woman now feels angry and she wants to take revenge, sure, she can initiate the process. But let us not lose our minds, get ahead of ourselves and without understanding the legal system and how it is exploited by men who commit crimes and by women who are sometimes false accusers, let's not get ahead of ourselves and lambast the chief justice of the country for asking a man if he still wants to marry the girl who has filed a complaint against him in which she has stated that I wanted to marry this man, he promised me he will marry me and now he is backing away. First and foremost, do you feel that the parliament bringing up the age of consent from 16 to 18 automatically you know brings in every woman under the age of 18 under the ambit of the poxo act in that kind of a situation do you really feel that the moment an allegation is made after a huge amount of delay unexplained delay the fact that the woman herself says that she wants to marry the person does that in it does in that kind of a situation, does it warrant the man going into custody? And of course, the final point to, to decorate this entire all over the place argument will of course be at the end of the day, the man is not asking for an acquittal or that the proceeding should end. All he is asking for is the right to his liberty, to the, the, the right to being treated as an innocent man until his guilt is proven in a court of law. Courts have always said this again and again and again and again. Bail and not jail is the rule. Let us not be so harsh. Let us not scream and and, and, and shout and, and ask for jail for an accused every single time there is a case. Let us not go all out and and castigate a perpetrator for his actions without them being proved in a court of law having said all of this i understand the the other harsh reality of this country that most often especially with a good defense counsel a rape accused or any other accused for that matter will also escape the consequences of actions that he has actually undertaken that's a harsh reality as well but at the end of the day, the point is this. A man, if falsely accused, if convicted, goes away to jail for several months and if actually conv convicted, can go to jail for seven years. If a woman files a false complaint of rape, statistically speaking, one in maybe one lakh women who will file such a case will actually, a false case, will actually go to jail for committing the offense of perjury, giving false evidence or instituting proceedings on the basis of false averments. All of these thoughts come back to, and I, I feel that I've in this video, I've still not talked and I've not completely justified um, the argument that I'm trying to make about what the Chief Justice meant. 
the the harsh reality again coming back to the harsh reality of this country's judicial system is that a judge will try to if a woman has filed a complaint with the sole motive to get the man to marry her the the courts of law will try to the human side of them will try to effect a uh, effect a marriage a compromise rather than sending the man to jail because perhaps the girl the complainant also does not want that am i condoning situations which used to happen in decades past where a rapist would offer to marry the girl and then the girl to save her and her family from the so called shame which of course is an absolutely absurd idea would marry the man of course that cannot be condoned that should not be condoned by anybody at all situations where you know child brides would be there is completely this this kind of a situation cannot be condoned however in a relationship between two human beings even if perhaps one person is a little you know is is underage of course the mandate of the law is the parliament the 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 lawmaker sitting in the parliament is that if you have sexual intercourse with any person below the age of 18 you will be punished for that action but for that to happen there must be ample proof to convict and if a woman comes and says that 5 years prior she was raped and then the rape happened on another couple of occasions unless she was in perhaps per in captivity in perpetuity you have to give a little bit of doubt to the man you have to give him bail you so that he can also mount an effective defense and prove his innocence in a court of law at least give the opportunity to the man if he is innocent to to prove his innocence rather than taking away his government job taking away his um, his freedom his liberty and then taking away his financial abilities on completely false and frivolous allegations now this man has already been married and that is the reason why the supreme court withdrew the the possibility of him getting anticipatory bail coming back to this this core issue why would the chief justice of this country say will you marry her the reasoning is if the girl herself wants to marry the man and therefore she has filed the complaint which is very very obvious from the order of the bombay high court i personally feel you might disagree the chief justice of india did nothing wrong and very very prudently asked the question will you marry her 